Welcome to the Rad de Brest, where there is a flat calm. And this is a little dinghy cruise, an organised dinghy cruise called Le Ribineur de la Rad. sailing from port to port in this lovely sailing area. Lots of little bays that you can stop in, lots of little villages that you can visit up tidal rivers. Lovely place. The rest of them are rowing over there to a place called Tandoof, which I like very much, but there again I have been to lots of times. And there they will find a cafe and presumably they're having coffee, but I think I can just stay here and make some coffee in the boat. point about life, I think, is not to imagine you've always got to rush somewhere. Sometimes it's perfectly fine to stay where you are and have a cup of coffee. Biggest problem on this boat at the moment is we don't have any biscuits. How I managed not to have any biscuits. What's the point of coffee if you can't have biscuits with it? <sighs> this thing about needing to get somewhere. This is the reason I don't have an engine. Well, not normally, because keen viewers of this channel <laughs> will have noticed that I have got an engine and that stirred up a lot of controversy but I bought it actually to use on the local canal because there's issues about if you want to use the canal you've got to book the locks in advance the lock keepers the lock keepers turn up at certain times and uh, so in order to ensure that I would arrive on time, I thought it would be a good idea to have an engine. But normally I sail without an engine. And the reason is that what happens if you have a flat calm like now, you can row, you can row, you can scull, or you can just change your plan. You can just say, all right then, there's not much wind. Which way is the wind blowing me? And at the moment, it's blowing me towards where this rally is going to have lunch. And according to my happy little GPS chart plotter down there, I will arrive only a little bit early for lunch. So I thought, well, why not just do that? And um, this happens all the time if you sail without an engine. As soon as you have an engine, you make a plan and you say, I need to arrive at such and such a port tonight in time for the pub, maybe. And when the wind falls light, you turn the engine on to meet the program. You get into this mentality of having to get somewhere on time. And that's what modern life is, is about, really. It's about making appointments and meeting them and getting there and yeah okay that's how the world works but the whole point of going sailing because the sort of sailing i <laughs> my, 
I've got the sail boomed out with an oar and it's just jumped out of its um, position and slid across the boat. Uh, I don't know whether you heard that noise. Yeah, if you... The whole point about the sort of sailing I do is it's a leisure activity. It's not what I do all the time. And so the reason for doing it is is as a change, is as a therapy. And it's great therapy just to sail with the wind and the tide, to escape for a while from the tyranny of engines, of a programme, of having to get somewhere on time. I think I'd better do something about this sail. One day I will do a video about this uh, helm impeder. We call this a helm impeder that's, um, we in the Dinghy Cruising Association call this a helm impeder. And it, um, it holds the tiller in any position. Uh, it's often criticized for being too complicated and oh, I'm sure there's another system. Trust me, this is an excellent system and it's not complicated actually but the wonderful thing is how infinitely adjustable it is and I basically leave it on all the time I just can control the amount of friction on the on the tiller but in winds like this I I basically let the boat steer herself My friend Mary Dooley turned up two days early with her little scamp dinghy and we were intending that I would do a boat test but we actually spent all the time putting right lots of little faults with the rigging as it was set up and so didn't actually have time to do the test. The rally itself began on the 15th of June and we sailed slowly together westwards across the Rad to the little port of Ross Canvel. As Les Ribineurs was a French boat festival, we stopped here for the mandatory two-hour lunch break and some of us even went swimming, including me. In the afternoon we sailed into the southwest corner of the Rad, an area I had never been into before because it seems when you look on the chart to be a protected area due to the French Navy on Ile Long. But it is a fascinating place with strange ruins lying on the military islands where landing is strictly prohibited so that no one can stand on the heights and look out over the secret military submarines on Eel Long, just nearby. Mark and Philippe 
who organized Le Ribineur, our very experienced sailors on the rad, and they know lots of lovely little places like the creek behind the Sion on the Ile du Renard, which was a fascinating place to explore at high water. We stopped for the night on the beach at San Fiacre and those of us who were sleeping aboard put up our boat tents while others camped ashore in the nearby campsite. I'm having breakfast. This is the programme for today, stopping for lunch further down the Rad and then going up the river to Dowalas right up here. Mary seems to be doing fine, but I do think her mast is leaning too far aft and we are going to have to look at that. <laughs> the early start. The, uh, the late nights, we had a, a big party last night with lots of um, apéro, one of these French parties that never gets beyond apéro and wine. On an event like this I miss the, uh, the quiet reflective morning. But it's very nice to see the other boats sailing along together and have the conviviality and the company. This is a traditional vessel of the Rad de Bresse sailing along with us. The island behind Patrick's boat is called the Ile des Mortes and it was where sailors coming in from ships that had been to distant foreign parts were put in quarantine for 40 days, quarantine, 40 days on that island. The little boat with the red sails is Anthony Zeff here using an outboard to catch up with the rest of the fleet. There's helicopters rushing around, various uh, picket boats. had a police rib come over and tell me not to go that way start going that way because just over there <laughs> there's a nuclear submarine when you point a camera at it it doesn't look um, very near <laughs> that, that nuclear submarine feels quite close only 11 o'clock. We've already had all this with the French Navy. What can you do? No wind, submarines all over the rad. Just up there. 
anyway, everyone else has gone into here, so maybe one can have a swim. Yes, well it was cold, but at least it gave me a chance to wash my hair. Yeah. Here we are, here's a delivery. Wine and camembert delivery. So we're sailing together again, having had lunch, and the Navy seem to have stopped playing with submarines, so we can sail down the Rad, getting very picky about people looking at their submarines. There were actually Navy people in battle dress hiding on our beach, <laughs> keeping an eye on us just in case we were we were spies. I'll show you where we went yesterday between these islands and down to this corner of the Rad and into this little Anse and then to Saint Viache for the night. Then the next morning up here and we were just rounding here along when we met the Navy and they turned us back towards this bay here and then this afternoon we're coming along here and trying to get east down the rad running in a flat sea with the helm impeder on one of the joys of life very definitely you're doing four and a half knots it's probably a little bit of tide with us but, um, very satisfying, occasionally just adjust the helm, otherwise one tries not to fall asleep. <laughs> That's the only difficulty when it's warm. <sighs> you know what I mean? This is the first time Mary has been on a long rally on her own in her new boat and she was very worried how she'd get on. She's looking a bit worried but she's doing fine, she's doing fine. So the plan now is to go into the Bay de Dowalas and then up the river of Dowalas all the way to the little town at its end. Vous arriverez à Daoulas? Ah, oui, exactement, oui. oui. Uh, beaucoup de petits voies l'avion. Ah oui, d'accord. The multiplicity of little creeks and rivers on the Rand de Brest is extraordinary. Each one different, each one full of surprises. Others have turned back, but I went to shore and bought a bottle of wine. The plan now is just to sail back down the river and round to Rostiviek. Lonely river. Just the birds and the sound of the water. At Rostiviek, we anchored right in front of the very appealing Café de Lonca.
This is Mary's scamp with the little pop-up tent to sleep under. Today's route is all at this end of the Rad and involves going to the Eel Bindi and eventually to Landevenek in the evening. This is a Bantry Bay gig which accompanied us for part of the rally. I do have to say that the one trouble with French dinghy cruises is when they say we're going to leave at half past eight, obviously, as a British person, I leave at half past eight. I plan my whole morning, I plan where my anchor is so that I can leave at half past eight. The French always leave before. Here I am, I left on time, and I am <laughs> the last boat. And this has happened every morning. And <laughs> normally in France, between you and me, normally in France, even in northern France, things happen half an hour after everyone says so if we're going to, if you're going to meet at 11 o'clock turn up at half past 11 that's the general rule um, they do talk about the card de la politesse that if you're invited round to somebody's house for dinner you always turn up quarter of an hour late at least quarter of an hour late minimum i suppose this is why they win all the ocean races <laughs> <laughs> they cross the starting line early. <laughs> there we are. That's the explanation. We've worked it out. anchored in the lee of La Petite Ile du Bindi for lunch and was immediately joined by the first of the rest of the fleet who had come across from Tandouf. In the afternoon we sailed across to the opposite shore of the Rad for a short visit to La Sion des Anglais, so called because it was used by Anglo Viking pirates when they were based in the Rad and raiding the local monastery. So now we're sailing from the Sion des Anglais here, and then across to the other shore of the Rad and up the Riviere de l'Hôpital Confru to the town and then back down again to a little creek here where there's going to be a party. The person here in a pink top is Mark Hu, 
one of the organizers of the rally in his lovely little boat Avel with her fine trickler. Just crossing in front of me here is Pierre Moucherie's Goat Island Skiff, a very fast and impressive boat which I really want to try out. That's Emmanuel Conrad in his Silmaril, which I tried out just before Christmas. The now quiet little community of L'Hopital Comfruit used to be a major exporter of stone for sculpture and virtually all the sculpture on Breton churches was exported from here. The little town has some fine quaysides now only used by pleasure craft. Just off the main river is a little creek <laughs> named after Mark Hu, or at least it shares a name with him. And Mark invited us to explore this and then have a little drinks party at the entrance. Pas de alligator. Ah, oh, c'est triste. Le crocodile, non plus aussi. <laughs> I said alligator, not alligator, so I suppose they're correcting my pronunciation. There are indeed no alligators or crocodiles in Roo Creek just navigators and it is lovely once more to discover the way that a small sail and oar boat can penetrate deep into the heart of the countryside. Uh, pavillon français. Exact. It's like Trafalgar again, isn't it? For 
or just a little 12 foot dinghy the scamp performs extraordinarily well in a strong wind in rough water but it would be unfair to do a boat test of Rue Barbie at the moment because her rig still doesn't really follow the designer's plans but when we've got her sorted out I will be doing one in the future Barbie from Avel Dro. You'll need to put your plate down as we come round the Sion as we'll be on a beam reef, Mary. Hello Roger, could you hear me? Yeah. You can sort of see it in the water, you can see the water changes colour just the other side of it. It's just ahead of me, the edge of the Sion. Okay, yeah, I can see thank you. Sion is a shingle bank and here at Landevenek it protects a little bay which Mach and the other organizers had chosen for us to beach on. When you do most of your sailing alone and put up your boat tent in solitary anchorages with the bird life and the animals of the foreshore it's strange to see an anchorage like this with a line of other cruising dinghies pulled up on the beach all together. A wide variety of different techniques are on display here. Jolu puts a little bivouacking tent on the open deck of his sail, while other people have more traditional boom tents. Good morning from Landevenek. So <laughs> it's dreadfully early. I've got to be off at seven. So it's uh, a lovely, peaceful morning outside. This morning's voyage is from here at Landevenek all the way down the Eastern Rad to Lobelach. You can see Mark Ruhu's dinghy on the right, sadly missing her French trickler after the vile attack by Mary Dooley. In this little bit of film by Mary Dooley, you see me sculling into the Bay of Lobelac. Here we pulled up on the beach for lunch, just by the little cow.
fait pour nous, pour ces gâteaux-là. The tide is against us in the rad this afternoon, so we're going to tack close in shore to keep out of the main current and then sail straight across to Landville. Turns out to be rather a tough beat to windward in the rain. I think I should explain the word Ribiner because you will not find it in your French dictionary. Ribin is a small pathway between villages well off the main drag. Ribbin is a term used mainly in Brittany. And so Ribbiner are people who venture off the main routes, off the main tracks, and find places of peace and tranquility that are rarely visited. Hello. Hello. Oh, that worked. <laughs> I forgot my quick I got it. Okay, have you got a car back Yeah, if you can hold me off. I'll hold you there, no, it's okay. Oh, man, I could have done without being wearing my waterproof and all the rest of it. It was a bit of a wet beat. I just didn't feel I had a second to kind of stop, you know. Yeah. And... 